All right, quiz time. What color is that? That's a root beer. Root beer? See, I call that motor oil. Yeah, root beer, motor oil. I think they're about the same. It depends how old you are. If you're 20, you say it's root beer. If you're my age, you say it's motor oil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, that's kind of pretty true. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in, wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Hope everybody is having a great Saturday out there. As I told you guys, I was heading out to Los Angeles for a little bit of a work trip. I did bring a rod and reel with me, but unfortunately, time kind of got away from me today. And I drove around the local area trying to find some public access water, and I struck out. That being said, I definitely found a hidden gem here in Santa Fe Springs, California. I'm standing in front of an old school, awesome tackle shop by the name of Save On Tackle. I've been running around the tackle shop for the last hour or so, getting a full tour from owner Amy Rothschild, as well as employee Matt. Both of them have been awesome and show me every nook and cranny of this fantastic privately owned place. In fact, I've spent so much time here today, I've even got a time card, because they clocked me in. <laughs> Before this shop closes up, I'm gonna go in and wrap up a few things. I hope you enjoy this walkthrough of this great independently owned tackle shop nestled just outside of Los Angeles, California. I'll see you in there. Hey, what's up guys? So, and buddy, how does it, save on or sav on? Save on. Save on. It, it makes sense it was save on, but my GPS said sav on, so I think it was just wrong. <laughs> so we're at Save On Tackle here in Los Angeles. So I've got my buddy Matt here, who has agreed to walk around the store with me and show me some of the really cool stuff. First things first, being from Texas, I'm a big swim bait guy, but there are some crazy swim baits here that I have never seen in person. So dude, tell me all about what is what are all these swim baits for? Yeah, man, so there's different swim baits for every application like you want. Uh, basically, starting off right here, we have like the three inch big hammers. These are gonna be great for your spotted bay bass. You can use it for anything else as well, but primarily these ones typically are gonna be good for like saltwater spotted bay bass. And then they have different sizes because you can go up to like calico bass and things like that. And then, you know, everybody has a different brand and different preference. We Over here, we have like the MC swim baits. Same concept as these, but these are also really popular when it comes to people who don't go down to Mexico fishing calico bass at Sea Joe's Island and whatnot. So who makes MC? MC is MC swim bait. Are they local? Yeah, they're all local. All these guys are local brands. Uh, Big Hammer, I'm pretty sure it's local, but they're... Because they, I've heard of Big Hammer before. Yeah, huh? they're on Taco Warehouse and things like that. They're, they're a pretty big brand. So Same what with, kind of see. jig head do you fish with these? Are these mostly bottom bouncing swim baits as opposed um, to ones that swim up in the water column? You can do both on these ones, uh, depending on how you're going to want to fish them. It's going to depend on the swim bait head you're going to get. For example, a big hammer for a three inch, I'd probably stick to about a quarter ounce or maybe up to like a three eighth ounce. These ones don't have the weed guard on them, so it's going to be better for swimming off the structure or you know through the water column. Um, now, if you do want to fish them in the uh, the bottom bouncing style, I'll take you guys over here. We have a very popular uh, jig head called Orby. Right now we're pretty slim on them due to, you know, the virus and all. But Wait, these, what is this, warbaits.com? Yeah, warbaits. It's nice. one of the more popular swim baits. Um, heads that we carry. And these ones actually have the weed guard on them. And then that's gonna prevent you from snagging up through the kelp or the rocks. And these three inch ones fit perfectly on the... Uh, Matt three Allen pounds. had a jig that was very similar to that. It was like a basically, I forget the name of it, but it had a weed guard on it, but it's a swim bait jig uh, head. I believe theirs is Dobbins. Okay, that's nice. I believe. And they like Dobbins, or they have their own jig head as well. I think he did have his own. It was like dirty jigs, like yeah. the brand, and then they made their own whatever it was yeah, called. Yeah, correct. It's just like, you know, everybody has like their own style of fishing. And Where are war baits based out of? San Diego, actually. Okay. Yeah. That guy's pretty local, man. He's a good friend of the shops. And what's his name? I believe his, name, his name's Afrin. Okay. Dude, he makes some sweet stuff. Yeah, he's so, got great baits. So what's the deal with the uh, 
the weed guard? Basically, the weed guard is just like a little like brush that prevents the hook from snagging onto like rocks and stuff. You can pretty much bounce it on things and not have it catch for the most part. I mean, of course, you don't want to flip with them or anything. It's not a thick enough weed guard for that. But you know, for the lighter stuff, you'll be okay. And then as you get heavier, for example, like the two ounces, you get a thicker weed guard, you know, for calico bass, sand bass, and things like that. Fishing deeper structure. So what am I doing wrong for bay bass? So if you're fishing from shore, is that the bait to fish with, a swim bait, and how do you fish it? Well, for bay bass, yeah, swim bait's going to be the most traditional way for fishing um, spotted bay bass. Basically, all you're going to want to do is rig it on here, and I can show you pretty quickly. Yeah. Just like that. Kind of just string it through like this. Ooh, that is saucy. Kind of like that. It gets a little better. I just I kind of did a quick thing. Now, how do you actually fish the bay bass, and where are they located? I mean, I know there's a bunch of jetties I was hitting and piers and stuff, but what yeah. do you do? Good question. Now, basically, the bay bass are anywhere there's rocks. You know, I'm going to say anywhere from a mile out in. But primarily, they're going to be inside the docks and things like that. They're going to be, you know, inshore structure, like off the rocks and things like that. And then off, right off the pilings. Basically, they're fish that like to stick to structure and weed grass, like, you know, grass, or sorry, eel grass. Um, they just chill in there waiting for, you know, smell to pass by and they eat it. And the way you would fish this exact bait right here would be you cast it out there, let it hit the bottom. I mainly let it hit the bottom off the rocks and just crawl it. For people that are coming here, like like that's just size-wise and color-wise, it's insane. Are there any basics? Yeah, well, the way we like to fish it here is during the day, we want to stick to something pretty natural, you know, like a kind of a smelt color like this. I mean, you can kind of interpret it any way you want, but it's a more of a natural color like this, so it would be perfect for the daytime. Um, during the night, I typically stick to like the darker colors. Um, I like the midnight color, which is a dark blue with a green tail. Let's see if I can find one. Yeah, something like this. This is the four inch model. Um, people use these for spotted bay bass, but it's primarily used when you're fishing in Calicos. It's a little larger presentation or on the back of a jig. Now what about size? What's the smallest big hammer? What's the biggest one? Smallest big hammer is going to have to be this two inch bait right here. A lot of the guys put these on A-rigs or they fish them for trout sometimes, believe it or not. But the most popular way people like these ones for are like largemouth. People actually use this for largemouth bass. Well, it didn't take me too long to find my favorite section of this place. The discount bin. <laughs> Not necessarily because I'm a cheap guy, even though I'm a cheap guy. It's that there's always one or two bits of old school gold buried amongst all the stuff that they couldn't sell for the past, you know, 50 or so years. <laughs> first things first, <laughs> there's a ton of these. Look at this. It's called Teflon Coated Fish Hooks. Easy set. Uh, I don't know what that is. I guess it's some sort of fish hook that's coated with Teflon to make it easier to hook a fish. Um, Matt was telling me that the owner bought a bunch of these probably decades ago, and I guess anything they didn't sell is uh, in the discount bin. So I might have to get one of those just because anything as seen on TV uh, kind of has me, you know, hooked. <laughs> What else do we have in the old discount bin? We've got some sort of old school Berkeley uh, fishing tools. A fish ventilator. Huh, okay. Well, I can tell by the yellowed package that this is uh, definitely old timey. <laughs> but I don't feel like I need to ventilate a lot of fish. Maybe that's for uh, if you catch some sort of deep saltwater bass and you need to ventilate it to let it go swim back down to its uh, salty home. What else do I see? Pro's Choice, AAT. Uh, advanced Fishing Technology. Huh, looks like some sort of sandworm there. That's pretty cool. Never heard of that company. Whoa, what is this? <sighs> oh, 
All right, I'm gonna have to tell them about this. So I see a pack here, save on tackle for $4.88. It looks like there's some Lunker City finesse fish in here. Uh, it looks like some other, I don't know what kind of worm or it's like a pretty hefty bag. And at the very bottom, a bagly small fry. <laughs> Uh, I think I'd pay 48 for just that guy, so um, that whole thing's gonna come with me. <laughs> That's too funny. What is this? Oh, wow. Another uh, save on grab bag of, these look like old Optimum baits. I used to fish a lot of Optimum swim baits actually for chain pickerel and striped bass on the old Severn River. Not quite this big, but that is, yeah, that's a lot of optimums for how much? Uh, $5.88. That's another good deal. Oh, man. <laughs> I actually kind of like these grab bags. They've got, like, basically little grab bags, all of them for, like, insane prices. <laughs> this place is awesome. Triple play. Check that out. What is this? This is from a Lunker Lure Company, and it's the triple play buzz bait. I've never heard of this. Looks like it's a buzz bait head with one, two, three different uh, chances to, for a fish to get hooked. That's pretty wild. Almost like a an Alabama rig, probably before there were Alabama rigs. I've never heard of that. I don't know how old school that is or not, but uh, it's available for $2.95 from Save on Tackle, so uh, that's coming with me. <laughs> that's amazing. The triple play buzz bait from Lunker Lure. New to me. Okay, I just spied something. I'm gonna need to pull Matt in here to show me. I see a couple of antique tackle boxes like tucked away. Um, some of them have price tags on them. I don't know if they're filled up with anything or they're just empty antique tackle boxes, but let me show you these to you. <laughs> okay, so first things first, look at this. An old Plano and an old something or other. $8.88. So I don't know if that's empty or not. I saw something that's down this way. Yeah, what is it? The tackle boxes. Oh, the old tackle boxes? What's up with the tackle boxes, dude? Well, are they empty? Yeah, they're empty for sure. But this is like, like your grandpa probably used one of these guys. This is a really old. Or, or me, but yeah. Okay, nice. Okay, so empty tackle box, is that guy empty too? Yeah. But that's a nice old Plano, man. Yeah, it's OG. <laughs> so, but the one that I, this thing. Oh yeah, there's that one. Dude, yeah. we gotta, I wanna see that. Man, you're finding things that I didn't even know were here, to be honest. Look, the stick, first off, the stickers, whoever's box this was, this is a legit box, dude. Holy smokes. Hold on, let me see the, that cover first. Look at that. So it says what? Firefighter, uh, Western Bass Fishing Member. Yeah, that's that's somebody's box, dude. That's, yeah. Okay. And what's inside? It's just empty box? Yeah, empty containers, but this would be like your standard 37 size. Uh, boxes right here. Yeah, they just all condense into one Like massive box You got your big box in the bottom for your soft plastics and whatever you need up here I would imagine this is your terminal box. Yeah, and then you got some another box you can put your crankbaits in And then maybe your swim baits or something and then all of your plastics down there Um, how much? This one's only fourteen ninety five. Fourteen ninety five. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to check it on the bag on the way back to Texas. <laughs> yeah, that one's coming with. Dude, that look at that. Can yeah, you imagine cool carrying box. that on the bank. Just pick that up for a second. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty heavy box. <laughs> it's, and it's empty. And it's empty, yeah. And I imagine adding another 30 pounds of baits in there. <laughs> I gotta tell you, the airport is gonna kill me, but this is totally gonna be my carry-on or personal item. I'm gonna have to check maybe my fishing rod because this for 15 bucks is coming back to Texas. <laughs> Just to think if I hadn't stopped in here, this would have probably been here for another 30 years, but <laughs> nope. <laughs>
Ah, uh, so what is the model number on this? So this is the Flambeau 2275, uh, the classic adventurer bass tamer. I'm gonna leave these stickers on here as homage to the former owner because whoever owned this was clearly very serious about California bass. And just that I get to pick up this piece of history and take it home with me, uh, it's kind of made the trip to be honest with you. My dad came from like um, a whole sporting goods store. He did anything from bowling balls to camping to gym clothes to firearms to rifles to ammo to fishing. And then this is his baby. He had five uh, fishing and tackle stores, sold them off independently, and this is his last one. And he's 90 years old. Still works six days a week. I just threw him his 90th birthday party. It came to be why he bought the store was he had Sportsman's Supply in, I don't know how familiar with the area, but anyways, there's a mall here called Stonewood Mall. Okay. It's an enclosed mall now. But years ago, when my dad had a store there, the mall decided that they were going to enclose the mall and they were going to up the rent and he couldn't afford it. So he went shopping for a store and this is what he found. This is somebody who's old school from a checking machine that he still does check registry on that machine. <laughs> I love that. That is old school. Oh, but this is, pay and he d he pays checks with that. Still signs them. He doesn't do anything. <laughs> the paymaster. That's a, uh, wow. I think I had one of these at one point. So this is my dad. I had him pick out a picture for his 90th birthday and that's what he picked. He was about 50 years old then. Still does everything old school. Yep. The paperwork. Love it. I mean, we do have a computer, but yeah. he doesn't do anything with the computer. Okay. We still have a fax machine. <sighs> we have a photocopier. Yeah. I mean, it's... Rolodex. Rolodex. I mean, you, I... That's all you need. And this is, yeah, this is, this is my dad. I love it. The, Wait, what is this? That's the time card. You clock in and out. Wait, how does that... So if you show up to work here at Save on Tackle. You have to clock in and you clock out how for do, how, how does this work? I mean, um, don't clock somebody in. Here. I don't want you to have to pay him. Well, I'm just no, 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 no. This is what it looks like. Okay. And it just, how does it, I don't know, I've never. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm not going to get it exact, <laughs> but I can give you an idea. Let me see if I can. The guys can do it better because they can get it on the line. But it will actually tell you the date and the time you clock in and out. <laughs> I so love it. Your own I time love card. I'm, I'm keeping that. That is that is the souvenir of the trip. I love it. Oh my gosh. So, this is a real repair. Okay, sure. Real repair. Like I said to you, we do line. We um, also do the guys. Uh, we'll rig jigs for you. Um, what are some of the other things? Oh, we rig flying fish. Kind of uh, like this? Yeah. yeah. That was a bad example. We ripped that one, but um, something like that. So not just freshwater. Pretty yeah. um, intense on long-range fishing. This is the arts and crafts area. I mean, I call it that because it's a bunch of stickers that we have. And like, do-it-yourself molds. So in a way, it's an arts and crafts area for Ooh. fishing. Pretty old stuff here too. Are these all old do-it molds? Uh, well, these are actually pretty new, but these ones down here aren't. Like this one right here, pretty old one. It's an OG one. Dart. Yeah, it's one of those little darter heads. Oh yeah, 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 look at that. Yeah. Oh wow. So these guys are newer, but those are... Yeah. Then, this tape though, that's pretty cool too, huh? Yeah, this, I'm pretty sure it's pretty old. I haven't seen this in a while. We use it every once in a while to make our jigs, but it's not common. What are these? Uh, these ones are what you call service irons and yo-yo jigs. So uh, the way to distinguish the, the difference between both of them is how heavy they are. For example, this right here is a light one. That's a 7X. Oh, that's just, that feels like almost plastic or plastic. Yeah, that's a 7X. Yeah. What is it light? made of? Because that is so light. Uh, I couldn't tell you. That's not, I mean, that's not like a steel jig. Yeah, that's, it's not steel. That's but then you have this guy, which is super dense and super heavy. Crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what you call a yo-yo jig. Basically, you're, they're designed to hit the bottom, and you wind them up as quick as you can. 
This one is designed to cast as far as you can and wind them up on the top. And you get predatory fish such as, um, you know, yellowtail, uh, barracuda. You get some bass that eat it too. Uh, bluefin. They'll eat this. So Okay, so I've seen these and I saw some loose things. What is this? Yeah, right there, that's a tube bait. Basically, people use that for rockfish, calico bass, and sand bass. It's a very popular bait. A lot of people would call it the hot dog bait. Great. It's a great simple design. Like you can't get new? much simpler. I mean, it well, looks like it's a combination of it looks like a swim bait head, it tucked inside of a tube, but exactly. it's not sliced. Yeah. Like a normal tube with a skirt, right? I mean, it's that's like a, a variation, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, it's a variation. They've been out for around, I'm gonna say a solid three, four years. Okay. They've been pretty popular. That's a heavy piece of machinery right there. Yeah. Too. I believe that's a four ounce or a six ounce. And then little, ooh, that's spicy, man. That almost could fish like a uh, like a Ned rig. Yeah. I bet that could land like that and almost sort of do a little. A little wiggle. Yeah. And believe it or not, that one right there, you fish it like like a jerk bait. Okay. And it kind of gives it like a like a quick little pop. Yeah. These are. The colors of these are awesome. Is this a local company? Or do you guys make That's these? That's a local company. That right there is um, made by KJ. And what's it say on it? Mag Magnum Mini. Yeah, because he makes some big ones. They're like 16 ounce. We have that in the rockfish section. Okay. Wait, oh my gosh. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. Oh, that's heavy. Yeah, 16 ounces. And if you turn the package around, you'll see like they catch wind cod and stuff on those. These fish are pretty deep, so you want to get down there quick. And this is how many ounces? 16. It's a oh. whole pound. Get down there. If that doesn't get down there, I don't know what will. As is usually the case, I'm getting overwhelmed here. Surprise, surprise. So I'm going to, in the few minutes before this place closes down, try to show you some of the sections as quickly as possible. <laughs> I clocked in for a reason, right? I just didn't know I'd be getting overtime. So we're in the bass section right now. We're gonna go ahead, first off, a ton of Gary Yamamoto baits. Right behind me, some nice depths. They don't have that uh, cover scat, but they've got a ton of other ones that you just don't see too often. Um, heading down here, we've got a big selection of Berkeley power baits. You can't be in California without talking about the old robo worm. By the way, should I do a robo worm episode? I, I feel like I probably should, huh? Some nice uh, jig heads here, looks like for maybe crappie or something like that. What are these? Firefly baits, never heard of those. Nice zoom section. What are these bad boys? Heavyweights. Look like some sort of little tube jig or something. If we either bass or crappie or, or bluegill. Oh, here's a section I like. Old school spoons. Look at those. And old school inline spinners. This would be like bait casting. Okay, yeah. I've got more crappie gear. Yeah, you could use that on a boat. Terminal tackle and uh, well, there's all the other accessories. So that was the, I would say, strictly freshwater section, at least that one wall of it. So I've just discovered a section that I've never actually seen in a tackle shop. A section of really pristine vintage fishing rods. <laughs> Look at this. They've got some glorious look at the wrapping on that and those old school roller guides so this is a nice uh looks like a custom trolling rod of some sort probably the kind my pop would have used to troll some parachute rigs for striped bass on the old chesapeake for 50 bucks if i lived here if i could drive here i'd be in a lot of trouble there's another one. Oh my goodness, that is just gorgeous. Look at how beautiful that rod is. Oh. <laughs> 40. Oh. I mean, do you have any idea what my carry on would look like? So this one says it's a Berkeley Hunter graphite fishing rod. It's an old spinning rod of some sort. 
That doesn't look super new. Look at the handle. <laughs> Looks like a six foot six, six foot six inch medium action spinning rod used as is for 30 bucks. And as is, it looks pretty good. Ooh. <laughs> What do we have here? Oh, this is just not fair at this point. This is a old school, original Luz bait casting rod. Uh, it says Luz with Fiji guides. I don't see any other insignia on it, but I'll give you a look at this thing. Beautiful butt, nice foam, pistol grip with the old school screw in, right on down to the guides. Again, nice classic wrapping on those. Oh my gosh, this thing is like pristine, and this would totally fit right in the old arsenal. Um, but it's a one-piecer, and I just can't get a one-piecer home. Oh man, I got to figure that out. That's a bummer. How much? This is really going to bum me out a bit. Again, classic lose bait casting rod. $20. <laughs> I was feeling good about this trip and now I'm starting to feel worse. Oh, man. I'm going to have to get Amy to hide this thing from me until uh, I come back because that's, I need that, but I just can't take it home now because, uh. well, I think it's time for me to get out of here before uh, I discover anything else that I just can't take with me. All right, well, Amy, Matt, thanks again for the hospitality. Really appreciate you giving me the tour and letting me film so all the Bass and Buds could join us on this journey. If you guys are ever in the Santa Fe Springs, California area, you definitely got to add this place to the retro bucket list. Rest assured, it will be well worth the stop. Until next time, Bass and Buds, shop local and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass and Buds.